I guess like a lot of kids, you know, a different passion had come along every week. I'd be rock collecting or building model aeroplanes or something. And when I was about six and a half years old, uh, next door neighbours where we were living in Condoblin out in western New South Wales won a little rod and reel outfit. They had no idea what to do with it so they gave it to us and I inherited it. And the next weekend out on the Lachlan River um, it had a lure rigged on it, a little gold uh, spoon and I was chucking it in the river and winding it in and just fascinated by the, the movement of the lure through the water. And suddenly the most amazing thing happened. Um, a redfin perch jumped on it, ate the lure. And um, I just didn't know what to do. I started running backwards up the bank and dragged this thing flipping out of the water. And uh, that was my first fish. And it just it lit a fire inside me. Um, something finally grabbed me out of all the, the hobbies that I'd had. I knew that that was the one I wanted to do for the rest of my life. My involvement with Shimano goes back oh, well over 30 years actually and uh, about 25 years that I've been working with the company on product design. It's been an amazing journey, come so far in that time and I guess the big thing we've done is been able to design tackle specifically for Australia rather than just inheriting everything from overseas. These fish have seen a lot of lures. I mean uh, Bushy and I invented these squidgies a long time ago and um, a lot of people have thrown these things at fish since then so a lot of fish have seen them. I don't, uh, don't mind taking the scissors to them and slimming down the profile on its sonic signature in the water. I mean, a decent sized brim is 20 or 30 years old so it's probably seen as many lures as I have and I need to show it something just a little bit different. I'm having to imagine what that lure is doing down there. Lying, hitting the bottom, briefly standing on its nose because of the lead head jig with the plastic tail up in the air, then falling over. And as it falls over, I bounce it up again, give it a couple of wiggles, up it goes. Swims up 30, 40, 50 centimetres off the bottom, wiggling its tail, turns over, wiggles its way back down to the bottom again. Looks like a sick fish or a worm or a yabby or something, just bouncing up and down off the bottom. Fish can't help themselves, they've just got to go over and have a look. Have we got <laughs> really good fish on light tackle? Ooh, he's heading out. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! It's just a chunky half kilo specimen there. So fat though. Be a nice one for the smoker. You know, if I had to pick what it is that really turns my crank when it comes to fishing, it's it's sight fishing. It's being able to see the fish first and uh, and then cast a lure to it. To me, that that turns fishing into hunting, and it's just a thrilling thing to be able to actually see the target there in the water, throw the lure or the fly in front of it, watch the the change in the body language of the fish as it becomes aware of what you've put in there. And if you get it right, that fish comes over and flares its fins and eats going, the thing that you're throwing in there. Oh, I'm getting whacked. Oh, what have we got there? Another flathead. <laughs> well, the flathead are liking this flick boat. filter of distance fishermen we always remember the good times and all the fish we caught but um, there's also a lot of time in between where you've really got to work at it and that's where having the right gear comes in and it's just been phenomenal for me to be involved with the development of all this gear to have my name on the rods that I've designed myself and along with Bushy the squidgies that we've made and that's what I go out and fish with every day and it's yeah it's pretty satisfying when it all comes together.